What's going on, great people? This is Danielle Pierce, the creator of Women, Wealth, and Real Estate, coming to you as promised on a Thursday, keeping to my Tuesday, Thursday schedule for the rest of this year, no matter what. So fingers crossed that we're able to keep this going. So thought I would switch things up today and give you an example of a real life situation and work order for property preservation for those of you who are interested in doing so because again the entire purpose of women wealth and real estate is well the focus is two things property preservation which is repairing and maintaining foreclosed properties second piece is tax lien investing today i'm going to take you through it'll take me like five ten minutes or so to walk you through a sample a work order that was assigned to my company uh, like last week and then it was for it was for three thousand dollars and i actually subsequently declined the work order after looking through the photos and coming up with um, what i consider to be the the appropriate bid so this will be good so if you're interested in preservation make sure you stay tuned like subscribe share the video um, make sure that you are on my email list if you're not already because all the best information and all the best deals do go to the people on my email list first to join that just go to daniellepierce.com or if you've ever signed up for a webinar or a consult we got you all right so i'm gonna do a quick screen share fingers crossed that my technology holds up and that we don't have any tech issues bam we rolling this here what you're looking at this is a screenshot uh i posted this in my facebook group which is women wealth and real estate and yes men are welcome to join men are uh actually most of the guys if not all of them are a pleasure to work with so it's it's, it's a it's a different experience than one that i actually um enjoy women we tend to have more insecurities and fears and should i do this and should i do that and men are just like you know shit we about to make this happen so i do like that about the fellas so if you're a man and you're watching this yes you're welcome to join and work with me or sign up with for one of the courses etc so i posted this uh october the 30th which was about a week ago roughly and this is a work order signed to me danielle pierce platinum field services and if you can see down here it says three thousand dollars so I got it. I was like, all right, cool. We'll go, you know, check it out and see what's good. So how about we get to the property? When I say we, I'm referring to my team, the subcontractor. I actually don't go out into the field. Um, and I, I really never have done that because I don't know how to do anything but take photos and work on my computer. I make magic happen behind this computer. Outside of that, I can't make any magic happen. <laughs> But, um, oh, if you're interested in preservation, please comment below. I'd love to know uh, where you are and what city you're looking to work in. If you've ever worked in the industry, let me know that as well. And if you know other people who have done it and they've had good or bad experiences, let me know that as well. I'd love to get that, that particular feedback um, because it's always helpful. So we get to the property and as you can see, these pictures are dated, um, I think the 4th, November the 4th. So I'm gonna take you through the property um the way it looks this is a very small white bungalow this is in houston and as you can see at first glance it's already it's not looking that good <laughs> it already looked like it's going about to be some mess right so if you uh we're going to keep keep scrolling through the photos and as you can see there's a lot of stuff here looks like you know possibly some hoarding going on which is um honestly more common than what i even knew before getting into this industry. Didn't realize that hoarding was um, as prevalent as it, as, it, as it is. And as you can see here, as you start to go through the living room, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And so there's quite a few pictures. I'll go through as many as I can. As you can see here, like that picture just kind of clearly shows the condition of the property. And then to top off all the debris and trash and uh, dog feces, which you probably can't see, but the contractor told me was present. Um, there's also a lot of mold inside the property as well. So from the looks of it, this property has been sitting for easily, probably since the summertime, if not longer. Um, so it definitely needs a huge amount of, of work to be done here. And there's a lot of debris to be taken out in, in, inside the property. And there's also a shed in the backyard full of stuff as well. And I think there's another small structure, which I don't even know what to call it, but it also has a bunch of stuff in it as well. I'm trying to get to the photos of the mold so you can see that. You can start to see it back here, um, the black mold that's on the walls throughout much of the property. So here is where, and this is one of the bedrooms. So pay attention because here is where um, you can separate fact from fiction or truth from you know the myths or whatever around preservation. Some people will tell you, and they've told me that, you know, oh, you can't make money in the industry or 
um, the, the companies will underpay you and, you know, it, it's, I don't like it. And, you know, all these lists of complaints. And I think that that's true about any industry and preservation is no different. We live in a capitalistic society. And of course, the goal of capitalism is to make as much money as you can and get it done by paying out the least amount of money as possible. So these companies are really no different. And this company that I'm working with here is actually a great company. I have nothing bad to say about them. No, I'm not going to tell you the name. Um, for one, it's probably a violation of my subcontract, my vendor agreement. And for two, I'm just not going to tell you the name. But um, it is a very great company to, to partner with. And so normally their price points are on point. And so the way this actually breaks down, though, is this property has about 100 cubic yards of debris. Cubic yard is about the size of a washing machine or a deep freezer. And again, there's about 100 easily in this property. I didn't go through all the photos, but just from what you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here between this, the property, the shed, and the other building. So 100 cubic yards, typically I would bid at, or the company would pay $50 a cubic yard, which is $5,000. So as you can see, that's already $2,000 more than what they're offering to pay. Um, given that the debris is hazardous and um, because of mold and dog feces and who knows what other animals have been there, right? This is the South. So I would imagine raccoons and possums and all other kind of, you know, wild creatures is what I call them. So that actually is worth a premium. So then I bid it at $60 per cubic yard, which again, 100 cubic yards times $60 per yard is 6000 So now they're offering, again, 3000 so which is half of what I think that it should be based on, you know, the bidding software that I use and calculating the cubic, cubic yards, you know, from looking at the photos. And, I, and this is what I do. So I can look at photos and say, okay, this looks like 20, this looks like 50, this is 100 cubic yards. And you, you get better by experience, um, just from, you know, you, just like anything else, you just actually have to practice it and do it to be able to calculate it accurately. So again, $3,000, I was like, um, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to pass on that. And, and that's what I did. So don't get me, don't get it twisted though. <laughs> Four years ago, five years ago, if I saw this come across my screen and had the opportunity to make $3,000, I would have been like, absolutely. Yes. Run me that money. Like I would have, we would, I would have figured it out. So, and, and, and again here, like the, I have a, two guys in Houston. And I could have made that $3,000 work. I mean, I, I wouldn't have lost money, but I still wouldn't have made as much money as I, as I know that I should have. And so that's the reason why I declined. But four years ago, I would have, this would have been a done deal all day. And I, that's just a testament to, you know, not being as thirsty for money. Like I still want to make money, but I'm not as thirsty and as desperate for money as I, as I have been in the past. And I know that you guys who are watching, you know exactly what I mean. Like sometimes it's like, okay, I need money immediately you know i'll just do whatever and then other times you get to the point where it's like okay i want the money but it got to be under the right circumstances does that make sense let me know down below if it does so i ended up defining this work order which does really nothing you know a lot of my students they freak out and they'll say things like oh what happens if you just don't want to do the work i say well you just tell me you don't want to do it it's not like corporate america nobody's going to take you into a corner office and sit you down and write you up like it, that's just not how it is you know, this is legitimately having your own business. And if you don't like the price points or you guys can't agree, then, you know, there you have it. So I wanted to do this real life example. Hopefully it was helpful for somebody. Hopefully this kind of dispels some of the myths that are out there as far as, you know, all oh, the companies will underpay you. Um, it sounds bad to say, but I think that, I think that most, a lot of companies across a lot of different industries will underpay you if given the opportunity or if you allow them to do so, if that, if, if that makes sense. I have another video that I recorded on my channel, you guys can go check it out, where I talked to a guy who was a software developer. And long story short, he worked for a company and they were paying him $60,000 a year, which he didn't have a problem sharing with me. And he found out that the software that he built, they were licensing his software out at a million dollars per use. So he's making 60, they're making a million dollars a pop from a program that he built. And that I think happens all day, every day in this country. So as long as you go into preservation with that mindset that, okay, I'm going to make sure that I know enough to, to submit the proper bids and, and, and ask for the right amount of money, you'll be in great hands. You'll be in great shape. All right. That's all I got for you today. Make sure you come back next Tuesday to, to see what else we're going to 
come up with and talk about with regard to real estate or preservation or tax liens. Um, Black Friday is approaching. Again, you want to definitely be on the email list if you're not already. You can subscribe at daniellepierce.com or sign up for a webinar. All those links are in the post description. Um, you just scroll down and, and it'll show up on your phone or on your laptop or wherever you may be. In the meantime, let me know what questions or comments you have. Post them down below. I try to get to as many as I can, um, especially if they're not ignorant. <laughs> I try to avoid all of those because I don't want to begin going back and forth with strangers over the internet. You know, I mean, that, that's just not a good use of my time. But if you have, you know, legitimate questions or comments, post them below. I'll try to get back to them if, not, if, if time permits. In the meantime, that's all I have. Sending you guys love, light, peace, blessings, grace, and clarity. Until next time. Bye-bye.